awesome audio for your YouTube videos and your live streams. And what's the difference between a jingle, a show drop, and a bumper? Well, today, Mike Russell of Music Radio Creative is going to join us as we discuss the ins and outs of custom audio. Stay tuned, folks. It's the Business of Video Podcast. You're listening to the Business of Video Podcast. Where the world's top YouTubers and marketers talk about what's working with online video. This podcast is recorded live on Facebook every week, and you can join us when you visit businessofvideopodcast.com. Now your host, Owen Video. Welcome back to the Business of Video Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest tactics on video marketing to grow your brand. I'm Owen Video, and you can join us live every week on Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Just give me five. That's right. Type five in the comment section now if you're watching on Facebook, and you will be subscribed to the show. Our guest today is Mike Russell. He's the founder, the owner, the genius behind Music Radio Creatives. He's also got a YouTube channel with almost, almost, by the time you're listening to this, He'll have 100,000 YouTube subscribers. We congratulate him for that. Doing awesome work in audio to help improve the way you sound on video. He's going to be coming on the show in a first, in a couple minutes. But first, I want to introduce to you our guest co-host for the day. You may have seen him before, ladies and gentlemen, but you've never seen him in all his glory today. It's Jason Rodriguez. Give it up for Jason Rodriguez, everybody. What is up, Owen? Super happy to be here. Super happy that uh, Nick's not here and I am here. So, I mean, that's pretty much yeah. where I, could, I have my coffee. I'm ready to rock. Nick is actually traveling. Did you hear? Did you see this? Nick is traveling to Armenia today. Really? That is for what? He's, I, you know, hopefully some good stuff. He's going to be teaching YouTube in Armenia, which is a wow. Uh, uh, advantage. Teresa Kennard is joining us today. Looks like we got Ross Brand out there as well today. So, Nick, we wish you well. Uh, we're going to miss you today, buddy, but we're glad Jason's here to join us. And, Jason, it looks like you have the world's smallest headphones. Uh, uh, no, the actually, it was. I'm glad you brought it up. I'm actually sponsored by United uh, Airlines now. I was on a plane ride last night, and the stewardess heard about my videos, and she said, Hey, you know what, we'll give you a pair of headphones if you could just wear them on a live stream. And I was like, that's awesome. And then she gave them to like everyone else on the plane too that needed them. Yeah. And it kind of made me deflate like, yeah, but it was really, they're really nice. I could barely hear you United for sure. No, it certainly does. Uh, you know, and one of the interesting things about those, those headphones is I wonder how many other people have worn them. Oh no, they came in a baggie sealed. Oh, good. Absolutely. They even got earbuds too, but the earbuds are uncomfortable. You really lucked out because it's not every day that the stewardess has the ability to bring on a sponsor. That's what I think. I think it's four screaming children that did it, but I'm going to go with my YouTube channel. That's yeah, how I, I feel that. Better. Whatever sounds better for me. You know, I, here's the thing. Like, like when they, they always hand it, when you go on these airline flights, they give you these headphones and it's kind of like, you're giving me headphones. Here's an idea. Give me a, you know, a double gin with tonic. Oh, that'd know? be nice. Yeah, much nicer. Urban on the rocks, you know, like for the kids, actually. These kids need to go. It's going to be a long flight. You should get You should get one of those little mini bottles per kid, per flight. You know, that's that should be the rule. Be, uh, baby bottles. Yeah, put them Absolutely. in the baby. <laughs> well, okay. for us, not for the kids, though, just so, to get that clear. We're not giving that to the children. We're just receiving it. Well, tomato, tomato, my friend. Tomato, tomato. Hey, I, I think we've got some interesting things in the news. Let's check out the news for today. Man, did you see that, Owen? A vlogger was hospitalized after going live in a car. He only has 1,500 subscribers, and I wonder how many he's got now. 1,500 subscribers. But I don't know if that's before the accident or after the accident, but I'd really like to like keep an eye on it, because usually when tragedy strikes, you know, things go, people, people tend to flock. So, yeah, exactly. They say you light yourself on fire, people will come around for miles to watch you burn. So a YouTube vlogger live streaming in his car and crashes into a big rig. Uh, that Was anybody else hurt? I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I saw there was another person that was totally fine uh, in the incident. And if it's a big rig, I'm sure the big rig won because I doubt he was in a big rig. So absolutely. Would have been horrible if it was like a gas tanker. Yeah. Well, I mean, for TV-wise, it would have been great. But for him, no, that'd be... The 
ratings on that would have been through the roof. Through the roof. You'd be you'd be on your uh, local news channel right there, everyone talking about it because like I saw you were on there again the other day, man. Congratulations yeah. again. I was on the news, and I really, I it's so it's so unsafe to live and drive. You know what I mean? It's so unsafe to do that. But Absolutely. You, might, you know what? What is the? Uh, yeah, this guy saying arrive alive. Chris Salata saying arrive alive. Don't stream and drive. It's so true. Right. How, right. If you are going to stream and drive, I think make sure that you have more than 1,500 subscribers. Absolutely. That or have someone else in the car, you know, just holding the camera for you and like just stay focused at the road, you know. Yeah, stay focused. I, look, I've been telling people, I tell my wife because my wife will actually film some of our vlogs in the car. And I go, babe, if you post that with the moving, the people are going to see the trees moving in the background and they are not going to be into the fact uh, that that you were streaming with a kid in the car or or or, you know. Uh, right with the kid in the car while you were doing getting a lot of great comments from our fans out there jason jackson great to see you is saying don't live and drive ross brand Derek connors is a liar Derek connors oh no wait he said he can't join us live uh i thought he said that he was joining us live but then he wasn't going to join us live so Derek, it's great to see you <laughs> out there i'm glad that you uh are, are staying honest with us jay dave is uh, logging in chris salada is logging in great to see you guys there kathy spazy is logging in is it spazy or spazzy either way we're glad to have you here and colin b rand cb rand has uh just hit bail he was able to to make his bail mm. and joining us today so that's always a good thing uh good thing to see so mm. you blogger is hop hospitalized i mean what do you do with news like that jason like what what's the, where do you go with that uh, i have i have no idea i mean it's better than putting a youtuber's head into a microwave what cement i think was like the last big one did you hear about that it was a few months yeah. ago i think there were I, I have no, I, I don't know. I mean, how can you top that is the question, I think. You know, like, what do you do next? Like, motorcycle tricks while going live by yourself? I have no idea. What was he streaming about? Unfortunately, only 1,500 people might know that, but maybe more. I have, I don't know. I, I didn't, I, you know, I'm not into this, like, whole, like, you know, new age kid thing on YouTube that are just doing these crazy things. I like watching, you know, the good old how-to, you know, all that yeah. good stuff. Yeah, uh, total fail, folks. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, don't uh, don't live stream and drive. Everyone's gonna know him as the YouTuber that did something stupid. Is there laws against that? I'm guessing that's categorized as using your cell phone while driving, depending on what state you're in. I'm okay. assuming you're not allowed. Basically, nationwide, you're not allowed. Okay, to to have any screens in front of you while you're driving, right? Okay. So that's basically the rule. So it doesn't matter if you're checking a map. It doesn't matter if you're whatever. You're distra it's distracted driving. Which, But what if it's hands-free? What if it's hands-free and you have it on your dash? I mean, that is very distracting, though, to be staring at the camera, especially, you know, the whole time. So how does that work, man? No, I, I don't think that that's, that's against the law. I don't think that they can prosecute. Maybe it's against the law, but I don't think they can prosecute for that. What do you guys think? Yeah. Should it be illegal to even have a phone in the front seat at all because i know for me like I, like i don't i have kids so i'm always like hey i want to like come back home to my kids but i'll be honest with you there's like a part of me where it's like okay i'm just gonna voice text real fast or i'll, I'll do a facebook voice and i'm doing this kind of thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, i've gotten a few of those from you it's like hey man i'm driving i'm trying to text but i'm talking and texting mick no i'm just kidding right yeah, thank you for throwing me under the bus <laughs> throw me under a big rig though um uh, Jason Jackson is saying, have you seen the size of a screen in a Tesla? Yeah, it's big and it's distracting. I don't know how the, all that works. Um, mm. uh, Chris Salat is saying video like that can actually be used against you in a court of law. That's you know? good. I think that's a good thing for oh, sure. Not okay, I think. You know, maybe may assuming the phone made it out okay. We'll see. We shall see. Well, so we hope he's okay. But at the same time, we hope you're in a lot of pain so that you've learned your lesson uh, and, and you're not doing that again. How would you feel to be if it wasn't a big rig, but it was your minivan? You know exactly exactly yeah man that'd be I'd bad be like, it's time for a new minivan right <laughs> hey what else we got in the news today jason what's in our news well pack? speaking of youtube there's a, a lady you know gave birth to a baby by watching youtube videos no uh, kidding yeah i it's look, yeah look at that that is insane now, now i've heard of people watching youtube in the restroom but but to actually uh right drop a baby while you're i mean how did that happen how did that how did that go down I, I don't know exactly, but what I want to know is, like, did they thumbs up the video after they watched it? Did they subscribe? Or did they just say, you know, I'll move on to the next? Like, most DIY people have a hard time getting subscribers and likes. And, you know, 
So I'd, that's the part I'm more interested in. You know? uh, also, it's a series, right? So you got this big series. You've got like now we've got the delivery, but then we've got the cord cutting, the cut the cord, how to. Ooh, right. Yeah. Really, I think she was trying to make a playlist. You know? I think, yeah, and like you know, like if that video takes off, you know, make more of them. So she better start getting in, you know, whatever. You know, you need more videos. We need more babies popping out. We need more umbilical cords, like you said. It's sorry. So it turns out the video went viral, right? The video goes viral, and uh, so she's off birth control entirely now. She's <laughs> she's ready to rock it. She's gonna have a if she follows uh Brian or any of those guys, she's gonna have to have forty five videos in a row all about that. Very niche down. Boom. <laughs> knees down how we made our baby you know that might exactly so i you know i don't know if they would actually show that one on on youtube right did she save the cord blood for you know future you know we need to know all the details we want right. to know everything What's happening to the placenta you know what absolutely I mean? did they eat it you know some people do that stuff what did they do no it's true it's a healthy it makes for a healthy happy family is that part of your new diet you think are you allowed to have the placenta with your new keto whatever that diet you were on I think so because it's all protein. But look, <laughs> I actually drank I actually drank breast milk while I was on chemotherapy. Believe it or not. Wow, that's I did, I did. Yeah, we did it come straight from the teat or was it? You know, <laughs> I'm just just interested. <laughs> Sorry, everyone wants to know. It's a scientific question. It is. <laughs> no, it actually came packaged in uh in uh. uh <laughs> <laughs> so it was a random person's breast milk, Owen. It was. <laughs> No, we knew her very well. There was an inner. <laughs> we took her out for a Friday night. She was a really cool lady. She was a bodybuilder. You know, we wanted to make sure she was strong like bull. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, Rena oh, Romano is saying uh, TMI, guys. I hope it's all in good fun. Kathy is saying LOL. Colin is saying afterbirth is a delicate. <laughs> It's all about where you're watching us from today. Right, yeah, welcome to the Business of Video podcast, folks. Uh, and that's uh, that's the news. <laughs> hey, if you're just joining us, you're watching the Business of Video podcast. I'm Owen here with my co-host Jason Rodriguez, and we want to welcome all of you guys watching live on Facebook. Today's show is brought to you by my brand new course called Square video memes have you ever wanted to turn your widescreen high definition video into a square video meme for posting on instagram or boosting as a facebook ad well in my latest course i will show you the quickest way to make square video memes that are high quality perfect for going viral perfect for sharing on the web once you go through this course, you'll be able to make a square video meme in less than seven minutes. It's the easiest thing to do, guys. I do it all the time. And you can go to thevideospot.net slash memes to go purchase yourself a copy today. It's a really great course, guys. We just launched it. We're excited to have it on the air. And guess what? We're going to be giving away one copy of or one, one access to the course at Square Video Memes today on the show when you use the hashtag, what did we say the hashtag was going to be? Mike. Hashtag Mike. Mm. So anytime you hear a good statement today or a, a truth bomb or, or, or you know, something you want to air five, then, you know, put a hashtag Mike in the comment section below. And we're going to pick a lucky winner by the end of the show is going to walk away with a free course into square video memes. Let's move on with the show. Our guest today is Mike Russell. He is the creative director at Music Radio Creative. Audio production is his life. Mike is passionate about helping you to sound great. He presents a daily live stream about producing podcasts, cleaning up audio, improving the sound of your voice, creating music, sound design, and so much more. Mike, welcome to the show. Well, Owen and Jason, it's a pleasure to be on. I don't know how I can follow those news stories, particularly the one about breast milk, but I'll do my best. All you need is your audio. You just followed it up very well and just put it all <laughs> in the trash right there. That's you, you sound amazing, man. Amazing. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. It's cool to be here. If it makes you feel better, yeah, we're all we all kind of sound like, you know, like like Nancy's, you know, with our our we're, on, we're actually on walkie talkies. Me and Owen are just pushing buttons, old C B radio, totally rad. My mic's not even plugged in. This is just a plot <laughs> that I use, you know, for, for all the stuff that I'm doing. But, Mike, it's great to have you on the show. Tell our audience a little bit about what it is that you do and what is uh, Music Radio Creative all about. 
Yeah, sure. So I help、uh, people to sound good. That's、uh, my main priority.、Uh, I am creative director at Music Radio Creative. We work with people in radio, DJs, podcasters, YouTubers、uh, to create awesome audio for them. So the intros and outros you hear,、uh, those little bits you hear at the start of videos and the end,、uh, all that kind of stuff. Plus,、uh, my main priority is is coaching people, teaching people、uh, via YouTube primarily、uh, how to sound good. Whether that's tweaking EQ, adding compression, getting a A good piece of kit, or、uh, or just plugging something incorrectly, whatever it is,、uh, that's what I do. <laughs>、uh, that you know what that's, and you've got a fantastic YouTube channel. You know, audio is sort of for a lot of people. It's like one of those mysteries to the video folks, and although a lot of our audience is into video, YouTube video,、uh, Facebook live streams, how important is audio to having a good video? Oh, super important.、Um, I mean, there's a lot of research out there that you hear.、Uh, people will watch a video even if it's pretty terrible, even if the quality is horrible.、Uh, but if the audio starts to degrade, people start to switch off. So,、uh, super important to get the right microphone,、uh, get mic'd up correctly,、um, and yeah, absolutely make your video sound as good as you possibly can. And I would say, with the tools available today, it's it's so easy to do it. So there are no excuses. I mean,、uh, the, the The tool I use primarily is Adobe Audition. It hooks right into Premiere Pro. There's an essential sound panel in there. You have to click a couple of buttons, and you're already sounding better. So it's it's pretty. It's getting easier to to sound good. It's it's not so over overwhelming as it used to be. Like you know, loads of buttons and and dials to tweak. You really can dial stuff in pretty quickly. Now I I love that. And Melissa, can you drop a link to his YouTube channel in the comment section? I want to encourage you guys to go over to YouTube. Even leave this show for just half a second. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel and come back to the show. What are and I? I know you can't walk us through everything right now. We've only got a limited amount of time today. But walk us through like what are those those introduct like those first couple of steps that we could do to improve our audio right away. Right. So the most important thing you can do, provide well, the first thing I would advise that you do is get your audio sounding good at source. So. Every single week, I get many, many emails asking me, "Mike, can you revive this? Can you make this sound better?" And I get that. You know, you're not always recording in great studio environments、uh, like we all, all are today. Sometimes you're out and about. You've got a Zoom recorder, or you're using a, a Rode mic mounted on top of your camera, and you know you get wind noise or something. You need to take that out. I get that.、Um, but if you can make that audio sound good. First of all,、uh, once you've got that good sounding audio, or、uh, if you need to do a little bit of noise reduction, do that. Then the first thing I would recommend you do is look at two things, and that's EQ and compression. Now, if you're using Adobe Audition, or I believe even Audacity has this,、uh, it's a parametric EQ. This is probably one of the easiest EQs to use. If you look it up, just、uh, search for it online. Parametric EQ, and it's a.、Uh, it starts off as a line, and you can go from low frequency right the way up to high frequency, and you can notch up frequencies and take them out, so you can hear the effect it's having, and use your ears to judge. What's sounding better now? The temptation is to take the bass and go, "Oh yes!" Like you mentioned, "Oh, we got some decent mics. It'd be good to sound better. Let's whack up the bass and sound really good."、Um, but it's not necessarily about sounding like public radio all the time. <laughs> well, you know, and I love that sound. I love that clean sound of of public radio. What what is public radio doing that gives them that that clean, crisp sound? Now that's a really good question. So、um, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. So obviously the microphone,、uh, I've got a, a Neumann TLM 103. It's a condenser mic. Most radio stations are using condenser mics. Podcasters, YouTubers generally tend to go for either Dynamics, Labs, or、uh, Shotguns.、Uh, so first of all, they got the, the the good microphone and the good acoustics, of course. That will then usually go into a mic preamp and processor inside the radio studio,、uh, and you can tweak dials on that. So you can add compression there, you can add bass, add treble there. But after you've processed the voice inside the studio, all the output, the voice, and if it's a music station, all the music gets processed just before it hits the transmitter、uh, at another、uh, FM processor, usually made by Optimod or something like that. And these are huge beasts. I mean, they cost. Thousands and thousands of dollars、uh, to get installed.、Uh, that's why generally radio stations have them, and online creators don't.、Uh, and that sort of basically flattens the audio and gives it that big, butch, you know, crazy on-air sound,、um, which we we know and love from radio.
You know, that's that's such great information because I've been sort of chasing that golden goose for a long time and trying to get that sound. And and really what I hear you saying is is unless you have though that equipment, right? Try to get the best sound that you can get with your equipment, right? Because you're gonna need a whole bunch of other stuff to get that NPR sound. Is that that kind of what I'm hearing from you? Yeah, totally. And um, actually, to give you a little tip here, so I did mention you can add EQ, you can add compression, you can do stuff afterwards. Um, I also mentioned the importance of getting it right at source. Another thing you can do is add in after your microphone, before it goes into your computer through your audio interface, some kind of mic preamp and processor. What this will do, it's, a, it's usually an analog box that will process your microphone. So it will flatten down the audio a little bit, make it sound better. It will add EQ if you like. It will add a gate, a noise gate, which uh, for those watching who don't know what a noise gate is, it basically closes when uh, the audio goes below a certain level, so has complete silence and only allows your speech to get through, which is really good. And something like, for instance, I would recommend a DBX 286S. If you plug that in between your microphone and your audio interface, uh, you're going to be ahead of most people, I think, creating right now. That's fantastic. I mean, that is so fantastic. Guys, drop hashtag Mike. I don't care how you spell it. Hashtag Mike in the comment section right now. We're with Mike Russell. He's dropping major knowledge bombs on how to dial in that audio. Great tips, Mike, on, on microphones and making your voice sound sound excellent. What about the sound effects, right? Uh, you, you, you're over there at um, uh, Music Radio Creative where you guys have tons, tons of sound effects. I'm just going to play you guys some of the things that they have over here at Music Radio Creative. So just listen in. I'd like to talk to you about an exciting opportunity that people are talking about. The best of Big Fish Work Parts, Volume 1. Over 400 powerful, useful, and unique effects. So we're hearing stuff like that. We're hearing another part. Now, now, now. Introducing, introducing the best of Big Fish Work Parts. So you've got tons of great audio on this website that's available for purchase walk us through sort of like the different sound elements that are available out there you've got jingles what's a jingle you've got show drops what the heck does that mean <laughs> walk us through some of that some of those terms define some of those terms for us yeah, that's a really cool question, Owen, because it, it tends to be something that's banded around in uh, in the production area, uh, in radio stations. But outside of that, no one knows what a drop, a jingle, a whiz, a static, a sound effect is. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a really good question. Um, so a jingle generally, depending on what side of the pond you're on, uh, is either something that is sung with vocals or spoken. So in, in Europe or in the UK, uh, radio jingles or jingles tend to be those spoken elements elements that have a voiceover and some sound effects in the background. So like a drone and static effects and crashes and uh, stereo tripling of the voice and rolling off EQ and stuff like that. In the US, jingles are usually sung. So we kind of try and differ differentiate by saying it's a sung jingle or it's a voiceover jingle. So that might be something you get for your podcast or uh, your YouTube channel, someone singing your intro or somebody uh, voicing over the, the intro to your, you know, the three seconds kind of, you know, right. Owen video kind of thing and then a, a whiz and then into your content. Uh, so that's kind of a jingle. Uh, although what I just gave you as an example there is more of a drop because a drop is like a very short three or four second uh, jingle. So perfect uh, for the start of a video or something like, or a transition if you're in a podcast uh, going maybe from an interview guest uh, into the next section so you can quickly move on to the next thing. About four seconds. Yeah, three, three, three to five seconds max for a drop. Uh, so those are a couple of terms. Obviously, you've got sound effects. Uh, inside sound effects, uh, as audio producers, we tend to categorize them uh, so that when we're working on huge projects, we can find and draw in exactly what we want. Uh, so a drone would generally be something that kind of goes... Uh, obviously a drone you, you know what a drone is and <laughs> the same and most of them are uh, well well easy to understand like beeps and uh, static noises so all those things that you were hearing there in the examples you were playing yeah those and those i think are going to make all the difference in your youtube videos and even in your live streams right because you're engaging the audience on a different level of media right you've got the video element now you're bringing in the audio element 
we love to use these. I'm going to play these for you guys. And you, you've heard me use them before. Like we use the news transition right here. As we go into uh, as we go into the news section, but then as we break up intermediate sections, we kind of say, "Okay, now we're going to bring on Mike Russell, right?" And that just sort of connects. We I call them knuckles, right? That's what I've always kind of called them. And so when I've used my fiber guys in the past, I said, "I need you to create a knuckle," and here's what that is. But what your website has done is you guys sort of create all of these for a custom show and professor nez is watching today professor nez is saying i sing my own jingles not quite the same thing hey <laughs> i saved it works for you buddy you make it happen uh how, how does this the order process work you've got these packages on your website melissa maybe we could bring that website up uh you've got these packages on your website when somebody orders from you are they ordering a pre-made set of elements or or is there a customization that happens Okay, yeah. So with that on our site, uh, generally the the primary product we sell are uh, custom made jingles. So uh, jingles either with a singer or a voiceover, and effects all mixed in and produced for you. Uh, so you would go through, you would select voiceovers, you type in a script, uh, select what style of music, or if you'd like sound effects, you can kind of you can build it. There's a custom builder there on the site that you can go through and create your own jingle. You can get a quote instantly online and check out. But also, if you're interested, you mentioned having elements and, and using elements yourself for knuckles, which is a really interesting term that I've never heard before. So <laughs> <laughs> you taught me something very interesting there. So knuckles, I'm going to have to look into that. But um, yeah, so for something like that, if you want to do it yourself, as many online creators do, I mean, let's face it, we're heading into a world now where we need to know every single package in the creation cloud or whatever it is we're using uh, to make the graphics, to make the video, to make the audio. So if you want to get the elements, we also sell those too. You can get them from a lot of other places as well, obviously, uh, and you can you can put stuff together. So I'd advise either getting a, um, a sound effects or work parts package that would contain like some music beds, uh, some pads and some sound effects. Pads are generally basically longer sound effects. Uh, so more like your, your knuckles uh, to get between elements and stuff like that. And you can either use them as is, like one individual element, or you can mix them together in a kind of multi-track fashion uh, and make something really amazing. The, the, the possibilities for creativity are really endless. So, so where are those birds coming from? Is that a sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've opened my window. It's like the uh, the only week in the UK that we have like hot temperatures. So uh, uh, I'm making the most of it. So you, you guys, I don't know where you are in the US, but uh, usually you're much more fortunate than we are here in rainy Britain with weather. So yeah, we got birds. I'm in San Diego. So it's, you know, it's miserable out oh. here. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> horrible, horrible. Out there. So like 80, 90 and sunny every day, right? <laughs> There's also kind of like that. Where's winter? You know, where where did our fall go? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, the grass is always greener, as 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 they say. <laughs> uh, Aaron Garcia is a live streamer. He's a good friend of the show. He says, I've been wanting to create an intro for our live show. What's the first step, Mike Russell, in in getting uh, like branded intros, jingles, sound effects for your show? Is it important that they all sound the same? How do you go about beginning, you know, that process? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a good idea to uh, keep consistency in your online branding. And that applies not just to your video. So if you've got a YouTube channel, you want to brand with audio. But think about if you have a podcast and also if you have a, a blog that perhaps you're integrating audio into to get that all sounding really good. Um, so a few tips I can give you here, uh, working with voice and music. First of all, with voice. Um, one voice artist is good. Two is pretty good, too. Any more than two voice artists on your branding is going to get super confusing, uh, particularly if they all have the same accent. So say if you have three North American females, that's going to sound really confusing. So I would usually advise a, a male-female mix, something like that, or just a, an individual voice. Um, you can sometimes be a little bit clever and you can sort of combine like a British male with a, a you know, an American female or, or vice versa, or, you know, a, um, a British female with an American male, stuff like that really works. And then find a track you really like uh, to be your overall branding track and make sure if you if you 
get that as a buyout. So there are lots of sites that you can get uh, buyout music from, uh, like uh, there's there's Audio Jungle, I think there's Epidemic Sound, places like that. Uh, and usually those sites will give you more than just one cut like the 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 full mix uh full hopefully they'll give you one with vocals sometimes they come like if they're made by an artist they have uh vocals on and then you'll hopefully get the instrumental but if you can also get the stems as well meaning um the guitar the bass the piano the synth whatever is in your musical track brilliant because yeah it gives you creative freedom. You can say, I'm going to do a mix out with just synth and drums, or, uh, you know, I'm going to mix this down to just be three seconds or 10 seconds or 30 seconds for a promo. You really want to have the full creative freedom. And even if you don't know how to change all those things, having those elements and being able to come to somebody who, who does know how to mix them all up is much better than saying, um, can you change this when it's like, it's all mixed together. Yeah, speaking of females, a uh, question for you, Mike, from the audience member, Teresa Kennard. Do women need to do anything different? I'm not sure I need more bass. You know, she wants to know. It's a very good question, Teresa. And uh, yes, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, frequencies are slightly different uh, generally between male and female voices. And that's why you'll find, uh, particularly in Adobe Audition, uh, in many of the uh, stock effects there, there will be male and female settings. So there's a, a voice enhancer. Uh, that's one of the simplest effects inside Adobe Audition. And you simply select male, female. I think it also has an other button as well. So I don't know what that one does. Yeah, um, none of your business, you know. Yeah, exactly. uh, no, so welcome, welcome to the 21st century, folks. Uh, <laughs> a lot of great comments out there. If you have a question for Mike Russell on how to dial in your audio sound effects, jingles, ask them in the comment section below. And don't forget, we're giving away a free entry into my new course, Square Video Memes, how to turn your widescreen high definition video into a square video meme for posting on the web. Just use the hashtag Mike in the comment section whenever you hear a truth bomb on the show today. Robert Yakman is uh, is asking, do you ever use format shifting to give that deep voice or do you pitch down? And if you could, Mike, maybe explain what he's asking a little bit for our audience that may not be as versed as Robert is. All right. So uh, sorry, explain that again. So format shifting or pitching down. To get a deep voice, to get a deep, oh, to, to get a deep voice. Okay, so format shifting is is not something I've experienced, unless it's something to do with sample rates or bit rates. Um, uh, so maybe uh, your guest will need to explain a little bit more about format shifting and what exactly they mean by that. Um, but with regard to pitch shifting. Uh, that can help. That can definitely help. So, uh, say taking down your voice, a few semitones, um, using a pitch shifter tool, uh, would definitely give you a deeper sound, but it depends what you're going for. So do you want deep as in Darth Vader or demonic deep, or do you want deep as in kind of bassy and full, uh, in which case you're looking at EQ for that. EQ. So what is EQ? EQ is equalization. So, uh, I'm trying to think of a really, uh, interesting example to give you. Uh, if you have ever owned a hi-fi or stereo system or even a, a simple mixing desk, you most likely will have come across EQ. In fact, I can say every yeah, every car owner will likely have come across EQ if yeah. they go into the settings of their uh, their hi-fi in the car. Uh, and that's where, you know, you're sitting in the car. Uh, I am obviously an audiophile, so I want to get audio sounding great. So the first thing I do uh, when I sit in a new car, if I get into a higher car, it's like, oh, this is tinny. This is horrible. This radio station sounds awful. So I'll go straight into settings and I'll be like, bass up a little bit, you know, treble up a little bit, mid-range, okay. And, and I'll just set that all up. So, uh, and you um, I think most people know what they're doing there. They're playing with bass, mid, and high. So it's basically enhancing or taking away uh, from different frequencies inside the audio to, to make it sound hopefully better. I hmm. well, have a great question from Graham Hoffman. Outside of uh, Adobe Audition, any other software you'd recommend? Hashtag Mike. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the hashtag. So, uh, yeah, Audition CC Graham is, uh, really, really cool. I highly recommend it. And, uh, I would say 95% of the videos I create are about that piece of software. 
Um, I am not really uh, musically experienced, although in our company we work with a lot of very talented musicians, uh, so they do all that great stuff. But when I do dabble in music and MIDI and things like that, I like to use Logic Pro X. And if you don't want to splash out and get Logic Pro, uh, which is Apple only, I'm afraid, uh, then maybe start with GarageBand or something like that. GarageBand is actually amazing in what it can do for free. So uh, yeah. yeah, those would be my other recommendations. And of course, Audacity, the gateway yeah. drug to the audio editing world. Yeah, yeah. We were using, <clears throat> Colin and I, CB Rand, he's in the comment section right now. He goes by a different name ever since they came after him. But we started a podcast, what, Colin, 10 years ago? And this is before podcasts were even like a thing. You know, actually, no, 10 years ago, I got married. So this must have been like 15 years ago uh, that we were we were creating these podcasts. And we used Audacity to get that thing moving and even in college I, I took spanish and you would speak into the computer using audacity i love how you said gateway drug because it certainly was a, a fun little tool and then garage band came out audition came out with other tools that that are uh slightly slightly better kathy spacey is asking how do you know that a jingle fits your niche oh really good question so um it really depends what it is you're doing. So uh, you need to kind of find out what your style is like. Uh, Owen, your style is like very upbeat, you know, very, you know, kind of up and high energy. So you want to make sure that you're matching that energy uh, with, you know, a high BPM jingles and, and kind of, you know, maybe rocky or dancey stuff. Um, but obviously, if you're maybe if you're trying to give across a professional um, kind of um uh, what's the word? If you're trying to come across as a professional, uh, so you're a, a lawyer or you're working in some serious medical profession, you might want to opt for something classical or something slow, definitely something without vocals, uh, that kind of thing. So definitely consider it. But if you don't know uh, who you're talking to or who your avatar is, ask. And a, a really, co well, actually, there are a couple of ways you can, you can figure this out. So obviously, you know, everyone always says, oh, survey your audience, send an email. Uh, so that's definitely one thing you can do. You can send an email out and ask people people to you know click reply and, and send them send their favorite artists or whatever um now something i haven't done this for a while so i don't know if it's changed and it's uh, facebook is always changing um but with facebook graph search you used to be able to type in things like um music liked by people who are you know into biking or music liked by people who are republicans or music liked by people who live in los angeles and um that can really help you to maybe understand what your audience want Wow, that's cool. Now, where would you do that? You would do that on a Google search or you would do that over at your website at musicradiocreative.com? No, so you, you type that usually straight into the Facebook bar. I'm just going to see if it still works. Music liked by people in Los Angeles, for instance. The graph search. Got it. I missed that hmm. part. Yeah. Facebook graph search to do that. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's it. So uh, you might need to like figure it out or like search online to find out how it works today. But yeah, certainly I used to do a lot of that. And you can find it's, it's amazing what you can find if you like type in your local area or, uh, you know, certain political persuasion or something and you can see all the different results. It's very interesting. I love that. That's fantastic. We're going to try that. We're going to try that today. Uh, the Graham Hoffman is saying that Republican search results in a lot of death metal. <laughs> <laughs> New comment. Joke. Like it's obvious, right? It's the obvious joke. You know, I, I thought it would turn up a bunch of Kanye. Maybe not. Nick Nimmin is saying Ross the Boss Brand, uh, giving a shout out to our buddy Ross Brand, who's watching out there. Melissa Media is watching. And Rena Romano is saying, I use Audacity and the Levelator, but will try EQ on Audacity or do I need to? So let's, I guess, well, that's a question for Mike Russell. If she's using uh, Audacity and the Levelator, does she need to try the EQ on Audacity? Oh, Rena, so you're using the the levelator uh, and you're not touching EQ. Now, levelator, I just need to like check this out because, uh, right, so that's like a third-party plugin, isn't it? That's some kind of download that you add on. Right. Uh, and I'm just taking a look at what it does now. It adjusts audio signals. Uh, so I'd need to know a little bit more about this to find out what it's actually doing to the audio. Just trying to have a quick search now, but um, it doesn't say anything about. Oh, okay. So it combines compression, normalization, and limiting. Right. So it's not touching EQ. So yeah, 
you don't have to worry about compression normalization and limiting, which is like pretty much 70% of your goal. But if you want to sound better, if you want to sound crisper, if you want your voice to pop a little bit more, uh, you will need to touch EQ. What I advise doing is getting the EQ sorted out first. So listening to your audio, making sure you're happy with the EQ and then run Levelator on it and let it flatten it all out for you and, and you'll be golden. Hmm, that's very awesome. Cool. Very good. Have you, I have a question for you. It's a, this is a really good one. No, uh, have you ever thought of maybe starting a channel or a program where people can write you their name and you just give them positive inspiration while they're going to bed? Like, Jason, <laughs> you're awesome. So that way the, your voice is just so soothing. Just wondering, because I would definitely sign up. Oh, Jason, that's uh, that's amazing. So um, um, that, I'll, I'll record that. Jason, you're amazing. I'm going to take that. I'm going to use that. And that's free. That's a free. I'll take that. Jason. You are amazing, Jason. You are inspirational. You can take on anything. That kind of thing you mean. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Sounds amazing. Absolutely. I'll take it. Awesome. Awesome. I'm writing that one down. Inspiration. <laughs> so, yeah. That could be like Alexa app right there. Like, you, you know, a start, yeah. start my, my morning. I don't want to say it because my Alexa is right here, but start my morning routine, you know, and, and it's just like, Jason, you are amazing, you yeah. know. You're or wrong. we just re we plug in his voice for Alexa, and then that's just like you got it. McDonald's is five minutes, you know, something like oh, you've got. I you can bring up some good points. Nick Nimmin is asking a great question. Nick, air five to you, buddy. Good to see you uh, logging in from Armenia. How amazing is that? We've got like worldwide distribution on this this Facebook Live. Uh, what are what? Where is his question? Is a great question. Uh, he says, what audio assets would you say are a minimum requirement? for live shows, podcasts, or YouTube vids? Like, what do you absolutely need uh, to, you know, in your in your show to make it professional at a bare minimum? That's a really good question. And uh, I want to say thanks to Nick for hooking me up to get on this show as well. So thank you very much, Nick. A big, big virtual high five to you. Uh, so yeah, great question. Audio elements needed uh, and keyword there to sound professional, because of course, if you're live streaming, uh, you don't necessarily need any audio elements to get going. And I wouldn't want anyone not to think about live streaming because they thought, oh, I can't because I need all these elements and I need to sound good. Um, so definitely get started, get going. But to sound professional, I think minimum, you want uh, an intro, a very short intro. Uh, so actually, uh, I'll answer in the short form. Just watch Nick Nimmin's live streams and what he does. <laughs> <laughs> and you made Nick Nimmin's assets. What are, what are, so he did a short intro. Yeah. Uh, and he's got a couple of show drops. Exactly. So that would be bare minimum. Yeah. Uh, short five or six second intro. And then uh, again, three or four second uh, drops to transition between features. Again, exactly what you're doing, Owen, uh, in this show. You know, you've got that that intro with the the graphics that come up at the start. And then to get between your features, you've got some some drops or or knuckles to get between each bit. So yeah, bare minimum, I'd say. Yeah. And here's what I would recommend to guys is that on your show intro, Give yourself about 20 seconds of, of outro music, right? If you notice when I play my bumper, it's like you're listening to the business of video podcast, da 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 da. And then the music plays for an additional 20 seconds. And the reason that we do that is because it allows me time to talk over the music and sort of bring the audience into the show. Whereas before the show, the music would stop and then my voice would start over and it was real abrupt, right? It was just like this real sort of it was a breaking moment of like what what just happened there was such a dramatic change so give yourself time to talk over and even at the end of the show you guys will hear i'll play the 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 outro right now at the end of the show there's this soft music bed i get about 20 seconds to talk join us next week right it's getting louder and we'll see you on next week's show and then i think it goes on for another 10 seconds or whatever uh, those are some like key points, I think, in what's going to make your audio sound better. Do you, and we've got some great questions coming in. So I'll ask my question in a second. Jenny Dawson is saying, I'm late, but can you use sound effects with BeLive.tv? You absolutely can. We're using BeLive right now. I'm using a program called Loopback, uh, and I'm using, I'm using Loopback to run the audio out through my microphone, and I'm using a program called Soundbite, which is a virtual soundboard. Now, you don't need Soundbite. You could just play, like I could play the audio files from Finder and just click on the MP3, 
Um, uh, but soundbite just it gives me a lot of lot of options. I can color code. I mean, you guys should see my soundboard. It's pretty neat. So you can definitely use those tools. Here's another great question. Um, well, Aaron Garcia is actually asking the same question. Are you able to use these programs when doing a live such as a Facebook live? Yes. Yes, Aaron, you actually can. But Mike, let me ask you, what virtual tools are you using to play your sound effects or, or are you adding all of this in post? Oh, wow. That is a really cool question. So I like that. And I, I like the uh, recommendations you gave there. So I think Loopback from a company called Rogue Amoeba is just, it does absolute magic inside your Mac. So really cool stuff there. I've not heard of Soundbite. Uh, so I have to look that up. But that's a piece of software you run on your Mac that gives you like a, a hot keyboard, does it? Yeah, it's like a it's like a virtual soundboard. So what I've got here is um, is just these little buttons that I can press. And, you know, like I can, I can time it out. So I could actually press. You're listening to the. I could press the mouse to click it, or I could create a hotkey like uh, uh, the A key. You're listening. Right. And it will play it. I can also fade it in, fade it out. Lots of, you got to set it all up right before yeah. you get going, but then it becomes push button when you're, when you're up and live. I love it. I absolutely right. love it. Cool. So yeah, definitely Soundbite. Uh, if you can get something on your Mac that can do that and you can route it through using uh, something like Loopback, that is a brilliant solution. Uh, what I use uh, when I've been doing my live streams, I use something on the iPad uh, called iJingle. It, it looks like that. And uh, you get it kind of looks like if you've ever worked in radio, it looks exactly like the playout systems in radio. It's even got a counting down and counting up clock and all of that. And you can, yeah, you can crossfade. Uh, so this is called iJingle. Uh, it's made, I think, by Camel Web Creations, and it's uh, it's really cool. Uh, the webcaster version, which I think I've got, costs quite a bit for an app. It's like twenty or thirty dollars, um, but it's really cool. And um, the this is the second thing that I do. Um, I if you want to take it up a notch and almost do your live stream as if it is a, a like a, an online radio show or live show, I highly recommend introducing a mixing. We call them here in the UK. We call them mixing desks. But I believe if, if I say that in the US, you're thinking about like a a, a wooden desk, right? So I'll say mixing board uh, or mixer. So uh, get a mixer. Um, be very careful in your selection of mix. So um, most of them generally only output the master fader back into your Mac, which is rubbish. Um, so look for something that outputs like every single fader individually. Very hard to find in a good budget. But I did a lot of research and I finally settled on this mixing board that I'm super happy with. It's called the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. It has uh, 12 channels on it. It's, um, you know, it's, it's about that big so it's not that big uh there is a, i think a 22 version as well but that's just silly unless you're you know really bringing in loads of guests and loads of outside sources so you can Sound plug in your TK. go ahead say that again soundcraft signature tk it's the soundcraft signature 12 mtk and uh yeah it's brilliant so i plug my ipad in there i've got uh mix minuses set up on there so i've got my mic running in i've got you on a on a fader right now and i'm mix minusing it so you're not getting any feedback um i can bring in sound effect. oh i can oh this is the coolest thing i can do this oh that's super cool yeah. <laughs> i wonder if i can do something like that am i able to do anything like that guys do you hear anything Check one, two, check one, two, check oh, a little bit. Oh, check one, two. Yeah, I'm using the Alesis, uh, the Alesis Multimix 4. It's a $99 mixer and I love it. It's handheld. It's even a little portable if you wanted to use it. It works perfectly on a Mac. I have had some clients grab it on their PCs and we haven't been able to stream the audio out from a PC directly onto the web in a live show. And so that's kind of like the burden that I'm seeing. Newer PCs will do it easily, but some of like the older PCs, some of like the PCs that your work bought, or if you guys bought a PC for Christmas like five years ago, it's probably not going to, you're probably going to need a new sound card uh, for something like that. So just be aware of some of those limitations um, uh, that, because they, they are, you know, every computer, especially on a PC, every computer is different, right? So you have to be really, uh, and Carlos Cepeda, who's actually exactly who I'm thinking of, is saying, yeah, we're having issues with our with our PC. Heidi Loney is logging in. Graham Hoffman saying, that's cool. 
Um, Mighty Atama is saying, I shared it to my page. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that we're dropping for you right now, give us a share. Click the share button right now. Share it on your timeline or in your favorite multimedia, social media, Facebook group. We'd certainly love the attention. We're talking with Mike Russell about high quality audio and how to get high quality mm -hmm. audio in your live streams. We got another great question coming in here from Robert Yachtman, who seems to really know what he's talking about. He says, how do you compress your vocals without making the breathing sound louder? Yeah, that's a cool question. So that's, uh, that's a toughie um, because, yeah, generally when you're compressing, uh, you're pushing down the the loud bits, but you're also drawing up uh, the soft bits. It's, it's the same as when you're on radio. You take a breath when you're speaking as straight like that. It's like sucking that up uh, and everything like, um, do you ever remember a track called Calling All the Heroes by It Bites? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And there's a bit near the end that shocks every radio DJ because it kind of ends dead. And you think, oh, it's ended. And then, and then it comes back. And the, the compressors on radio stations used to just drag that up and you just got this hiss like like that. So, um, yeah, there is a lot of issue with compression that will uh, cause these things to happen. So the way you can get around that is you can, um, first and foremost, use something like um, either a, a lightly set noise gate or a downward expander. Uh, if you don't know what either of those are, I do have videos on my channel that explain them. Just type into the, the search bar on my channel and you'll find out. Uh, and that will basically push those breaths down. But the coolest thing that I have found uh, uses some kind of algorithm to, to work this out. Uh, it's a plugin from Waves Audio called D-Breath. And I recommend this often to podcasters. Now, Often you don't want to completely remove those breaths because that can sound unnatural. Uh, so what deep breath will allow you to do, it will usually identify all the breaths that you've got there and you can either completely eliminate them if that's your goal or you can just turn them down. So after you've done the compression, you've got all those sucky breaths. You can just uh, like notch them down a bit and make them a little more natural. So that might be another solution. That's fantastic. Cool. That's fantastic. Jason knows a lot about deep breath. We've oh, got another man. Uh, question from graham hoffman graham hoffman is saying we my, uh, my question went by too fast thoughts on a usb condenser mic like a blue yeti is that a great starter mic what would you recommend mike russell i wouldn't comment uh, necessarily on individual brands whether they're good or bad but i'd say usb generally no you want to go for xlr uh really i know usb is handy and it's portable of course i get that uh, and if you're traveling all you want is your you know your macbook and your usb mic um you know, and I know like Blue Yeti mics in particular are great. Uh, I, I hear people doing webinars like love them because they can just stick them on the table and talk hands free and not have to worry about a big thing, you know, blocking their face out on the screen. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely try and go for XLR and get yourself an audio interface. Really, really easy one is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. It's so dirt cheap for what it does. It's rugged. You can take it everywhere with you through airport security. No worries and um yeah it's cool so xlr if you can that's so fantastic. mike along with your great tutorials now are you offering like you were talking about the bumpers and all of the jingles do you do that for people and as well you know just for pay or whatnot like say if i needed a jingle do you offer that service and what is how do we what do you start like do you, can you give like a crash of like hey this is what you do this is how i do it and this is what you get and how long it takes yeah, that's a really good question, Jason. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's what we do at Music Radio Creative. So um, anything you want, really, that's audio uh, or creative audio, if you can imagine it and you can type in a script and give us some direction, uh, we'll come up with it. So uh, that could be a voiceover jingle with sound effects. It could be a sung jingle. Um, but we worked on all kinds of projects. So we've created um, full songs, like three-minute songs, wow. uh, usually, again, for creatives, for radio stations, um, or people who are launching a campaign or something like that and they want it to be very memorable. Uh, just recently, actually, a brand new uh, FM station launched on the Isle of Wight here in the UK where I live, uh, which is famous for its music festival for those outside the UK. Um, and we created a three-minute song all about the Isle of Wight, and it was so cool uh, wow. to work on something like that, uh, especially when you, you know all the places that are getting sung about. And it's one of those things that really sticks in the listener's head. Uh, so, yeah, if, you, if you've got a budget to do a song like that, that's, that's a cool thing to do. Now, awesome. what is that run say again sorry 
What does something like that run? Uh, what kind of price? Yeah. Uh, so let me work this out. Uh, usually a sung jingle would start, and I'm kind of pulling figures out the air here because uh, Isabella tends to look after pricing more than I do. Uh, a lot of the prices are on our website. Uh, I think Sung Jingle starts somewhere around two to $300. Uh, and you'd probably be looking uh, $1,000 plus uh, for a, a fully custom uh, full song with uh, sung vocals with, with one vocalist. And of course you can go crazy. You can add more vocalists. You can have all kinds of stuff, but we've got musicians who can play different instruments and everything. So yeah, whatever you want, uh, generally we're up for it. <laughs> awesome. That, that folks is the higher end of the website. We've just pinned his website to the comment section right now. Go check it out. You can get products. You can get packages for as low as $60. You can get individual assets for as low as like, I think I saw $15, $29, depending on what you're looking for. And I'll tell you guys this right now. I, I've been getting my stuff on Fiverr and it costs exactly the same. All, all things said and done, you know, after you get the voices, after you get the re-edits and after you get the sound effects, you're paying exactly the same price or right. I mean, I'm looking at this. I looked at this this morning and I go, oh, my gosh, like we could have been using Mike this whole year. And so it'll be exciting to sort of like move as we move into new projects, you know, looking to using um, uh, music radio creative. Mike, it's been great to have you on the show today. How? What is the best way to stay in touch with you? Should we go to the, the YouTube channel, the website? What do you think? Well, thanks, Owen. And first of all, that's really cool of you to say that. Thank you for that. So, um, yeah, the best place uh, to find me and follow me online is my YouTube channel, and that's youtube.com slash musicradiocreative. Guys, go check it out. He's so close to 100,000 subscribers. Go down subscribe go to the comment section subscribe to his channel and uh, let's help him get to that silver silver play button now we did have a contest going today we are giving away a free entry to my brand new course square video memes how to take your high definition widescreen video and transform it into a square video meme for sharing on instagram and facebook in less than seven minutes. You guys are going to go nuts when you see this course. So, drum roll, please. Our winner today is Rena Romano. Rena Romano is the big winner today of the Square Video Memes course. Congratulations to you, Rena. Reach out to me personally, reach out to me on Facebook Messenger, and we will get your email. We will connect you to the course. Can't wait to share it with you. Jason, it's been a pleasure being here with you today. Thanks for joining us on the show. You as well. And thank you, Mike. That was awesome, man. I'm honored to be here. Mike, Cheers, Chris. Cheers, Owen. Great to have you on the show. We can't wait to check out your channel, guys. I've got eight more seconds before the vocals come on my closing outro. We'll see you next week on the BOV Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Business of Video podcast. If you like the show, give us a review on iTunes or share this episode on social media now. Join us next time on Facebook Live. Just visit businessofvideopodcast.com and subscribe to the newsletter updates. This podcast is brought to you by TuberTools and biztubeacademy.com.